please put them on airplane mode, please, so that we don't have any interference with the mics. Um, and our first presenter is Nancy Chen, so please give her a round of applause. something I wrote in memory of all the animals that died because of me. <laughs> when I was five, three of my rabbits died because I gave them a dinner of poisonous vegetables. When I was nine, my hermit crab landed in the bottom of the trash can when I neglected to feed him. Who knew crustaceans needed food at least once a week? You might think otherwise, but I adore animals. I really do. However, I finally realized my inability to nurture living animals when I burned off my hamster's ear. As an only child, I often begged for a pet to take care of, even though my history proved that I only shortened their lifespans. Then in fifth grade, my dad surprised me with two rubber bosky hamsters. They were about the size of an iPad charger, and I named them Baby and TT. The first death was definitely not my fault. My dad had placed a bunch of foam cranberries in the hamster's cage to make it festive for Christmas. And two days later, TT was as cold as a frozen grape. I found some bite marks in the shiny red berries, and I cried for an hour. But what happened to baby was much worse. I'm a very forgetful person, so it was only natural that I didn't close the cage door one day. Frankly, I'm surprised I hadn't forgotten earlier when there were still two hamsters alive. Well, baby ran away, and I embarked on a tiring process searching for him. On day two, I found the little guy uh, sprinting his way into the piano. My dad took on the piano cover, and before I could grab him, Baby bolted into another unknown direction. For some reason, he seemed to really like the piano, because I always caught glimpses of his chubby body, chubby body waddling um, near the pedals. By day five, I had given up on catching him, because I knew Baby would eventually get tired and crawl back to his comfy cage. Unfortunately, I was wrong. I was practicing piano one night when I heard some scratchy sounds five minutes into my playing. Scratch, scratch. I ignored it. I sat on playing once again, annoyed. Maybe it was a tree branch just scraping the windows. I resumed my duties. Scratch, scratch. The sounds were getting louder and more frantic, so I turned around to find the source so I could kill it. And then I saw a dark ball in the bowl of my six feet long lamp. I thought it was a rattling ping pong ball, but I was wrong. It was Baby. His little body was trying to wiggle away from the burning light bulb, but it was already too late. His left ear had become a shriveled up black mess. I quickly turned off the lamp and lifted him out. How could I have let this happen? I thought I was a perfect owner. I had given him food and shelter, the basic necessities of life, but I had neglected to provide health insurance. <laughs> Nothing could be done about his ear, but on the positive side, I can now tell the difference between him and the new hamster I got two weeks later. <laughs> I concluded that baby ran away because he was yearning to find a new friend, so I gave him a new buddy. I don't know why I thought I would be capable of taking care of another hamster, when the last two ones I had were either dead or permanently injured, but I went to PetSmart and brought home another one named Adorable. She didn't last long either. <laughs> my friend had brought over her hamster one day for a play date, and this hamster was the size of three of my hamsters. Thinking all animals could be friends, we placed her gigantic pet into my hamster's cage to let everyone get acquainted, and they fought. The giant hamster chased Baby and Adorable until Adorable finally mustered up her courage and faced Giant but it was too much. My friend's hamster sank her teeth into Adorable's head, and Adorable crumpled into the ground. Within half a year, two of my hamsters were dead. Baby, however, lived for two years, a, the average lifetime of a hamster. I wasn't a total failure, and I thank Baby for continuing his life so I could realize that. Actually, I didn't put new food into his bowl the week before he died. Well, let's just say Baby died of old age. Bridget. Hi guys. Um, first, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Mr. Anderson because two years ago he told me to read here and I thought he was crazy. Um, <laughs> so uh, I want to read for you guys a college essay that um, I wrote and the prompt says, when you first meet someone for the first time, what do you want them to know about you, but generally don't tell them? Hello, my name is Happy. 
You firmly shake my hand and I gently hold yours. I mirror your kind smile, joy radiating through the gaps in my teeth, and remark how pleasant it is, how pleasant it is to meet you. For all you know, this is the truth from the inside out. Hello, my name is Struggling. You see my head held high atop my shoulders, but really that's just to keep my head above the water. I ache to share with you what pains me to wake up and face each passing day, so that maybe, just maybe, I can be assured that I'm not alone. But my parents told me not to say anything, so I won't. Hello, my name is Suicidal. You would never have guessed that darkness lives inside of me when you only see me in the day. I retreat from the pressures crumbling in on me from the outside world to my mind, which I want to escape equally as much. Whispers tell me I'm not worth it. They say no one would care if I no longer existed. I decided to show them. Hello, my name is Recovering. You note the tenderness of my skin, how soft my hand is in the midst of our handshake. It's much like me, fragile. Easy to penetrate what was put up initially to protect. Like a guitarist builds calluses over time, thickening their skin, so do I. I was introduced to my creator. He told me I was worth it. The whispers won't get to me anymore. Hello, my name is Hole. You catch a glimpse of the light in my eyes and can't help but stare. Something different radiates in my gaze and it gives you hope, not just for tomorrow, but for today. There must be more to her, you think to yourself. My worth no longer comes from you, but comes from me. There's no longer any use in hiding my scars. They can help to heal yours. It's true, I want to tell you, that things will get better. I'll show you proof, if you would allow me. Hello, my name is Bridget. What's yours? Thank you. Um, just as a quick note, I, I just um, wanted to share this because if anyone is like dealing with depression or anything, I want to encourage you that um, you're not alone in it. And I really, really want to encourage you guys to get help because um, I promise you that things will get better. Thank you. Next is B2 James. Um, so this started as an English paper, I mean a poem, but like the prompt was perception versus reality. Young, wild, and free, that's all we'll ever be. Our life is all about our music and friends. We dream of buying a mansion and driving a Benz. We don't care about who we hurt. We treat people like dirt. It doesn't matter who's in our way. We will keep adults at bay. We have a low attention span. We live our lives with no plan. We are all one of a kind. We will not let anyone make up our minds. But is, there, but is this all there is to the teenage mind? Are teenagers just an angry kind? I find that hard to believe. Maybe this isn't the case. Maybe it's all just a face. Maybe we're just the first generation who are not afraid to question what we see, who are tired of lying to ourselves and playing make-believe. Maybe we're just done being forced to agree. We understand it's time to think for us, to understand concepts adults refuse to discuss. We promise ourselves that things we see on the news, our decisions, we as the future, will never choose. We see a world filled with hate. We acknowledge a workforce that likes to discriminate. We see the hungry ones. We glimpse the fight for guns. We see the climbing date rape rate. We discern young girls who self-hate. We no longer trust people in the government. We understand there's no such thing as early retirement. We are used to the threats of a nuclear war. We are no longer bothered by the bloody gore. But I don't want to come off as conceited. My generation has a lot of faults too. None I wish to hide up or skip through. It has become evident to me that we have many changes to make too. We are a generation who use screens as masks, who drink at parties from our handcrafted flasks. We are a generation who use racial slurs as practice. Even the boys on the street are as prickly as a cactus. We are the generation who are confident enough to ask for nudes but when we get called in class, we know we're screwed. We made up our mind on who we want to be, someone who probably has a six-figure salary. We are a generation who worships our phones. We are the type of people who are used to a media that is overblown. We are the youth who are known for our eye rolls and moans. We are the kids who are convinced we are full grown. Young, wild, and free, that's all we'll ever be. Also known as Generation Me but we still have time to connect the love and hate line. 
Because although the difference is fine, I know that in our hearts we are actually kind with our strong old minds. And I know we will be unstoppable, and nothing, if we set our minds to it, will be impossible.
say your name. If you asked me this when I was four, I would've been like, hey, my name is Jun Gyeonro, macaroni fingers, chubby pudge, thick baby accent, only echoing my dad's lecture, Dian, as in Indian, as in grace, Ro, as in Wunro, as in tenderness. And before you ask, yes, you can call me by my small name, Dian Dian, because I know it's a mouthful. But first day of preschool, my mom on the car, sunglasses glittering in cloudy weather, says to me, when you get to school, your name is Rebecca. Rebecca has always been a pocket staple, a back burner torching in, uh, at the grocery store when old ladies poke my cheeks. I'm cute little Rebecca. It is sticky and foreign in my mouth when I present myself to the class. Reverse order understanding where self comes before person, comes before family string, isn't grounding. It is an addendum. It is an anomaly. I hinge my jaw practicing this, a chant in the mirror. My own family inheritance stolen like Esau's by my own hand. Hello, my name is Rebecca. Xing. How do you say your name? Jaundiced skin, studded with acne. Here I am, the epiphany of elementary insecurity when I learned, hello, my name is Ching Chong Ling Long. My name sounds like spoons thrown down the stairs, and I rackety fried rice, and I slur my L's together. My fellow Asians and I complicit, comfortable in the desecration of our language and culture. We share the communal laughter. It is so easy to devour every stereotype thrown at us, spit it back up and mealy vomit, spoon feed it to one another. Did I dilute it when I joked about my immigrant mother's accent? Was I a portrait or a caricature when I told you the Asian grading scale? Did you think my chuckles were a nod of approval when you stretched out the corner of your eyes and preened? All I can strangle out of my lungs is a guffaw as classmate after classmate treats my lunch like an interrogation session. After a while, I get tired of being called a dog eater. After a while, I start bringing in Lunchables like everyone else. How do you say your name? A fever tinged with the taste for yellow skin prowls on the street. When I walk down the sidewalk, my transformation begins. Hello, my name is Babe. Nothing stops a man desperate for the dragon lady, a china doll, a geisha girl, to turn his cravings over to the nearest one whose label fits. A succulent feast for exoticism, fetishism. Suddenly, I'm his checkbox on OkCupid. Okay hey, what's your Chinese name, honey? It's bad when the name is uttered out of mounds with corners crusted over with spit and tobacco, always eager to extend hands worn with masturbation. It's worse when it slithers out of your lap partner with a snicker. When I tell an acquaintance briefly of the leering eyes, I have to introduce myself again because now, hello, my name is Overreaction. How do you say your name? It's okay, just call me Rebecca. How do you say your name now? It's more subtle now, I must admit. Nothing's, no one's so uncreative as to cackle at the shape of my eyes. No one runs their gaze down my notebook to gawk at a grade. And hardly anyone fumes for me to go back to where I came from, although I would love to because Arizona is quite nice this time of year. Voices are soft, kind, and they try to accommodate the space, the volume, the density of my mother's name. I, alongside her, clenching the remnant of my own that's tucked behind my ear, waiting to return to an age where maybe mouths are more pliant and flexible, or maybe it will be as easy for us to say Schwindiero as it, as it is to say Arnold Schwarzenegger, or Friedrich Nietzsche, or Benedictal Cucumber Patch. Hello! <laughs> My name is Xun Dian Ro. My Dian is a grace, unrivaled by swords weaving in battle like constellations bolted in place, a loquacious black hole swallowing burdens and slice. My Ro is tenderness, raw and bloody, an unfettered howl with the backdrop of mothers eating their young whole for the mercy and the devotion of another. The X is slippery, coy, just shy of a molar from sh. Your lips will curl around the U, tongue propped for whistling. The N is soft guttural, a purr, lyrical, impossible. Is this an adequate answer on how to say my name? Okay, um, first I wanna ask you guys, does anybody have any other pieces they'd like to share? All right, then I'm gonna grill you with some questions until we're done. Um, if you guys, what is your inspiration or who is your inspiration for writing and presenting today? Um, I didn't really have an inspiration for this film. It was more like, yes, I love one song by My Chemical Romance Teenagers. That one song? Yes. 
Yeah. yeah, that was the song. That song I was listening to, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to write something about this. Um, I guess you just find beautiful phrases, words, and you try to find the context to say them in, and I guess this was the one context I thought it was appropriate for. Um, my inspiration for writing that was that I want to go to college. <laughs> and um, for presenting is, like I said, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, I'm going to have to go along with Bridget, and <laughs> I was kind of forced to write this piece, but um, I also find inspiration from just listening to music. So. Um, I've actually told my piece in story form to a lot of people, so I can't really say, but for presenting, it's definitely Mr. Anderson, because I didn't think I would submit a Writer's Week piece until Mr. Anderson suggested, hey, you know, everyone should do this, and it's a great opportunity. Okay, next question is going to be, what is your favorite memory of Writer's Week or your favorite presenter so far? Um, my favorite is whenever Mary Fonz comes. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen uh, Sierra DeMalder a couple of times and I think she's pretty amazing. Um, I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago, but there was a kid that um, read a piece about his stutter and it was really, it was just so moving. Um, I haven't been to Writers Week before, but I really enjoyed student presenters and the guy yesterday, Adam Gottlieb, I thought he was pretty cool. Yeah, um, me either, so I liked Adam Gottlieb and I really liked Elizabeth Chick. And on with the questions, um, do you have any advice for anyone who is thinking about maybe next year putting forward a piece to write? Um, maybe like where you write, when you write, all that jazz. Like, when I was writing my piece, I was thinking about like certain people and I'm like, will I offend anyone? And I guess something I learned was like, write what you want. Like, don't think of other people necessarily because if you make it like clean and if you make it like I can't think of like control it so other people like it you won't get the truth across and that's kind of the most important part of writing uh, I would just say do it it's really fun no one's gonna judge you and if you have a piece just submit it and have fun with it it's kind of the same just like go for it because I mean like I don't know I I'm enjoying this and I feel like it's a really good experience and um, yeah. <laughs> I would have to say the same, just uh, come up with an idea and run with it. Yeah, I agree with everyone else. <laughs> um, it's just a really fun opportunity and no matter what you write, it's gonna be good. Okay, let's have another round of applause for our presenters. You guys were a great audience. Um, and does anybody have any questions for the presenters, for the writers? Bueller, yes. Okay, did you guys hear that? What was your biggest fear coming on stage today? Okay, so I, this is kind of stupid, but I didn't know the auditorium was this big. I didn't know so many people would like be here and like so I was here yesterday and I'm like oh my god and I like, legitimately sat here and sat and like counted how many people came yesterday 347 and I was so scared um I was just scared I was gonna, like pass out or something but I didn't so it was cool I was really afraid that I was gonna pee my pants <laughs> I'm gonna go, I have to go with uh, being afraid to pass out too. It's pretty hot up here. <laughs> I was just scared no one was gonna like my piece. <laughs> Any other questions for our writers? Yes, standing up. What is your spirit animal and why? I never really thought about this, but 
Maybe a panda? Um, I'm gonna go with a manatee because they're so calm, passive. Uh, I'm gonna have to say an elephant because they're happy animals. Uh, I don't know how to answer this because I thought spirit animal was like a Native American like spiritual term that was like close to their culture, so I'm not gonna answer. <laughs> I don't know, someone told me that someone was going to ask this, but like, I guess a zebra? They're pretty? <laughs> Any last questions? Yes, Sean. <laughs> Who is your favorite author? Um, I really like um, Dickens and like, I like a lot of classical stuff. I also like Ron Carroll. Uh, like Vladimir Nabokov or maybe um, Jorge Luis Borges. Um, my favorite author is actually a friend of mine whose name is Josh Reebok. Um, I don't really know. I just, I read a whole lot of different authors. <laughs> um, mine right now is Agatha Christie. Yes! Woo! Okay, I think we have time for one more. All the way up at the top. Do any of you want to move forward with writing? Probably in college. I'll probably just keep it as a hobby. Probably not. <laughs> I'll be writing cases when I'm a lawyer. <laughs>
So when explain to me what in the world just happened Seems like yesterday I saw you walking in the hallway laughing and rapping Now I wake up on Easter morning and this is the news I receive You're telling me one of my brothers ceases to open his eyes and breathe I want to scream both of my lungs out so they can no longer function You were Superman and he challenged you were bound to stand above it You were my biggest fan, one of the few who actually believed in me I took that off for granted, but now I finally begin to see Just how precious this one life is, you don't get a second chance So go ahead, sag your pants, go out and make a whole bunch of plans Remember to stay true to yourself, let that good karma come around And just recognize that Mario Thomas was one of the realest dudes in this town You're the only one friend I've had I ain't never been so sad This is not real, this is not real I need you here, how can I live, yeah How can I sleep at night Knowing you ain't never finished your life This is not real, this is not real I need you here, how can I live, yeah as soon as he got on the bus, I would hear him scream my name and yell, J-I-A, J-I-A, tell me what is good, I said nothing much, D.T. It took a tragedy to realize how much I cherish moments like these, how he was blaring music in the classroom, rapping to 2 chains, little B. God have mercy on my soul when I say this wasn't meant to be, the dude was only 15, rip my heart out, take a spleen, I had bruise on both my knees, from endless hours of praying to a God, I'm convinced they ain't hearing me, I'm torn to pieces, I can't go on, these people People saying that I should be strong, I saw him plays last fourth and long Honestly, I can't remember a time that we didn't get along You're gone and I feel useless To Mario Thomas, the definition of someone to live a life to the fullest You're the only one friend I've had I ain't never been so sad This is not real, this is not real I need you here, how can I live? How can I sleep at night knowing you ain't never finished your life? This is not real, this is not real. I need you here, how can I live, yeah. Thank you. Vikings, the Vikings said this is our year. 